Right. Oh, we're still a little bit warm, not releasing yet. I'll give it a few more minutes to cool down. Right, we are free. Bit of funny stuff just there, but then this bit here is supposed to clip off anyway, like that. And we've got a bit of stuff there, so the motor should just clip in there. That looks a little bit rough just there. Steering, right, is that going to move? Do I dare? When you watch his videos, he's much more uh, confident when he does it. But then he'll have done several hundreds of these. Probably, quite literally, several hundreds. What we need to do is separate the wheel from the central... Uh, ...hub, so it starts turning. This bit's just um, to help support it when it was printed. I'll trim that off properly in a minute. <laughs> I hardly dare do this. Same with the back. That's the axle, which is very weak. Um, there's a hole up the middle so we can stick a metal rod up there to make it stronger. Oh, that has turned. Right, so that is free. And if you saw the earlier part of the video, I was doing this on the broken one and that just snapped in the middle anyway. So really need to get the metal axle up the middle there to give it some strength. A little bit of uh, stringing there. I, I hardly dare do this. I don't think I, I don't think I dare do it on camera. It's going to go wrong. And then I might might say something I shouldn't say on camera. I will work on it and see if I can get that to come loose. That's what this printing place is all about. It has very tiny little bits that support the layers or support the parts that when you finish printing you just give it a bit of a twist and it all comes loose nicely. How about that way, can we? Getting better. I so say I'm just too nervous to go all the way with this. I 
a lot of this stuff on the back should come off, I think. I'll have to look at his video again. So we get into the bit that actually turns. Yeah, that's as far as I'm prepared to go on camera. That bit works. That bit works, but I want to put the metal rod up the middle. That bit didn't print quite right, so I'm not sure if the motor will actually hold in there as rigidly as it should do. Eh, not bad. I'll move that out the way and get a decent thumbnail of it. Right, we're downstairs now. I've got one of the front wheels free. How about the other one? Not that they'll be doing much, but I might just trim those bits out of the way. There we go, that was it. That's freed it. Oh, excellent. The next thing is, do I actually try my new TPU to print the tyres? This could be a long video, or I might, you know, I might separate that out for a separate video, trying to do the TPU. So I don't expect that will work first time through. Nothing to do with his files, just that I've never tried printing TPU yet on my printer. I recently swapped the um, front end, front end, hot end, for a direct drive. So I should be able to do TPU on it. But I'm reading up and watching videos at the moment to see all the extra little things you need to be aware of, like the fact it tends to stick too well to your bed and some people end up with it stuck to their bed and they can't get it off. But at the moment, I am impressed. That fits there, that fits there. Oh, I wonder if I've got a motor that might actually fit in there. Clearly, this isn't quite the way it should be. So it's just a matter of how much of that is absolutely important and how much of it we can survive without. Oh, and I said I was going to put a rod up the middle of the axle as well before we break it. Probably break while I'm doing this. But sandpaper would probably be a better option just to go around here. Like I said, check the video description for the links. This guy under engineered as he goes by on YouTube. He's really into these print in place radio control cars and he's developed them, continued to develop them. 
moving forwards all the time. That is going to fit in there, but I probably ought to trim it to the right length before I try and push it in. It's going to break as I do it, I'm sure. Actually, it probably wouldn't hurt to leave it sticking out. It'd be something to grip either side if I need to. Well, it might help if it's sticking out. I can get hold of it. Yeah. Impressed. All right, found a random motor. 150 size, I think they call them. Slots in there, and that's shaped the right way for that to fit in there, just like that. So there we go, it's in. Uh, I don't remember what size pinion gear. I'll have to have a look, see what I've got. Just if I just bend that out the way a bit, you can see at the back there where that hasn't printed quite as neatly as it should do. We're not really gripping on the back there as tightly as, as it probably needs to be. And the idea of this bit here is it gives us a little bit of flexibility to improve the road holding. Fascinating. And an ordinary servo fits there. Um, I've got a dead servo here somewhere. That one, when I say a dead servo, it actually killed the ESC. Um, so that's going to go in. Can't be that way. No, it's got to be that way. Might be a different size servo. I've got smaller ones. This is a nine gram, five grams, probably much smaller and big enough. Smaller and big enough to do the job. I put the axle through. As soon as I pushed it through, it started to split here. So I put super glue through the tube and pushed my metal rod through there, which happens to be a piece of bicycle spoke. It's the right diameter, two millimeter diameter. Thanks for watching. If you want more information, check down below in the video description. If you like this video, you might like this one up here. And if you want to subscribe, you can check out my channel over here. Up here is my latest video on my channel, and down here is a video playlist associated with the video you've just watched. Thanks again for watching.